Next up on the comedy side, we have Chris Puto. Please welcome Chris Puto to the stage. Uh, women, adult women, do not should have not have sideburns either. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about here. You know, shave those things, ladies. I know they're going to grow back thicker and darker and hairier, but you know, it's all in the name of good grooming. I hate nothing worse than when I think a chick is hot and then all of a sudden she puts her hair back in the ponytail and not all the hair goes back. You got these the Jewish girls hanging down there. It's very unattractive. You know, there's. It, it's kind of like when you're in Thailand and you're and you're fucking a you're fucking a hottie in the ass for like an hour and a half, and then all of a sudden you try to go for the vag and there's a penis there. It, it, that that is pretty bad. But when you find out a girl has sideburns, that's just a step below that. So girls, please, please keep it smooth. Uh, oh, why why is it why is it, I've been observing this? Why is it that uh, girls drop their phones into liquid so much? Look, no, no, no. It's like every week I see on Facebook, somebody posts, you know, I, I, I dropped my phone in the toilet, can you send me your phone numbers? Or, or, and it's always 100% of the time it's a girl. I dropped my phone in the sink. I dropped my phone in, the, in my menstrual bucket. They're always dropping it into something. And, you know, I understand that the girls, I guess, are always multitasking, like in the morning, you know, they got the phone cradled, trying to put up makeup with one hand and, you know, menstruate with the other hand into the into the bucket. That, yeah, I, I know you all use a bucket for it. No, I, I have low flow. No, you all use a menstrual bucket. Uh, yes, a menstrual... <laughs> I've disturbed them. Um, and, the, and, and, and menstrual fluid, as you know, period blood is pretty salty, as you know from the taste. And it's, it's a good... It's a pretty damn good electrolyte. So when that... Water is one thing, but if that if period gets into the phone, it's going to short circuit it right away, and you don't want that. So please, girls, if you're going to do all this, please at least minimize your accidents by keeping the phone away from your big disgusting menstrual bucket. Two, why I like why I like too soon, and why I take that as a compliment, I, it, it kind of goes back to my dating strategy. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I like getting a too soon from a girl because at least it means she's she's interested but not right now maybe maybe a bit later like for example if I'm on a date a first date with a girl for the first time and I whip out my cock as I normally do on the first date I uh, if she says too soon that's not a no that just means maybe later you know she's just not comfortable but she might be interested in seeing it later on. Uh, which rarely happens I mean most of the time on a first date she'll uh, you know typically a girl will scream. And, uh, and jump off the merry-go-round and go running for a mommy. <laughs> Which, uh, and that I take, that I usually, I take that as a sign to discontinue the seduction. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but too soon, you know, maybe, again, she might be interested, maybe not to, maybe she doesn't want to see this thing tomorrow, but, you know, maybe 12 years from now when she turns legal, she might want to see it. As the, as the Supremes told us once, and as Phil Collins reminded us, you can't hurry love. No, you just have to wait. <laughs> so yeah, Christmas is next week, so I think in the spirit of the holidays, I'm going to talk about a, a topic we can all identify with. Koala AIDS. Hannibal, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for going on before me. I'll be losing the butt with this. No, this is a true news story this week. Koalas, apparently, in Australia are dropping dead from AIDS and chlamydia. And uh, well, this, this is true. There's, no, it's, ki it's ki uh, kids. Koala immunodeficiency syndrome. Dropping dead, people are worried about the effect this is going to have on, on uh, uh, tourism to Australia. I'm more worried about the effect it's going to have on koala porn. <laughs> because I don't know if you guys are aficionados like I am, and if you understand what's so special about koala. Regular porn, you know, male, man, woman, you know, there's only so many inputs you can use, but you, get, you got a hot little teen, fuzzy little, uh, I messed up the wording of that. Fuzzy little teen, barely legal koala girl. With a couple guys, you get one in the vag, one in the ass, and one in the pouch. That there is some cutting edge porn, if you ask me. Sometimes, now sometimes, some, rare occasions you get to see you get to see a pouch being punched. Very rare. Most most koala actresses, most koala actresses won't take a load in the pouch, and that's part of the problem because there's, it's increased risk of, of trans transmission from pouch to penis and vice versa. There, I think that's the problem with the. With the AIDS there, so um, you know. Don't know if you're. Don't know. If, well, who's singing? You can say that's fine. You can say it. I mean, 
the uh, uh, you know, because I'm I'm into kind of the non-traditional porn with you know body parts that you normally don't see. Like the, I was hoping the Optimum was going to take up Vivid's offer to do a porn scene, so we'd see that C-section fuck. And the uh, oh, and, he, and and we're not going to see that now. And even at this point, I, I'm I'm sort of the, the novelty of utter fucking a cow is is really getting lost on me. So I hope we don't lose the uh, the koali porn on top of that. In there, guys, uh, you big fans of Family Ties? Yes. The TV show. And most of you guys are like half my age, you don't remember it. It was on the air in the 80s. Uh, it's been in the news, a couple cast members were, uh, were in the news. Uh, uh, Meredith Baxter, who played the mom, uh, she finally came out as a lesbian like last week at, in her 60s. Uh, and Brian Bonsall, who played the little cousin Oliver who joined in last season, I forget his, his name. He, uh, he just got arrested for assault. And, and uh, you know, that was a good show. And it's, I hope it doesn't start getting this, this uh, different strokes vibe to it. With these problems, and the cast mem the other cast members are, are obviously kind of upset about this. They they uh, a bit stunned. Uh, Michael J. Fox, especially when when he heard the news, he just cannot stop shaking his head in disbelief. Too soon. I haven't gotten it too soon in a while. Thank you, Tim too. I'm sure that it out because you don't like being, met, being mentioned in my videos. I know the reason I joke about Parkinson's. This is why we joke about Parkinson's and stuff like that because we all we all laugh at it. You know, the laughing at the misfortune of others. That that's the greatest joy in the world. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. And that's why. Hey, you, look. I mean, come on. Who among us? Who among us? You know, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But who among us doesn't get a good laugh over some wrinkly old cunt who doesn't recognize her family anymore? Comedy goal. Or, <laughs> or some. Uh, we're <laughs> some ridiculous old cocksucker who can't stop shaking. I mean, sure, these diseases, these diseases are bad. They're a little bad for the. They suck for the people who have them. Don't get me wrong. But I think the rest of us, the amusement we get out, and kind of outweighs it. So these, I really think they're a net benefit to society. I don't, I don't, you know, that's why I'm against stem cell research because I don't want to see these diseases cured. Um, you know, I'd rather. I'd, I'd, if we're gonna, no, right. See, look, we're all laughing at this. Yeah, sure. I mean, people have a degraded quality of life, but we're we're getting a good kick out of. Oh, so last uh, last Friday was uh, Kick a Ginger Day. Did we all did we all participate in this? You know how this works. It's, it, it was a, it was the day where uh, everybody's supposed to attack and assault redheads. <laughs> Ginger is a redhead from the South Park episode. That's what's for this. Uh, uh, um, it actually happened. I know it happened. There were a couple like high school kids who got, who I guess were beat up. And uh, why is it, I am appalled that in this day and age there are still children that have to go through this. You know, being redheads. <laughs> Polio was wiped off the face of the earth decades ago. Smallpox, smallpox was eradicated and yet the scourge of redheadedness continues to plague our nation's youth. Polio. I mean, yeah. <laughs> There's no, I mean, I'm nothing against having red hair, but it's all the side effects of having red hair. You know those ridiculous freckles, the skin that never tans, and the smell, my god, the smell. It doesn't... It... Yeah, redhead people smell, that's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Even the girl, and there's a stereotype about the girls, you know, hot, fiery, and everything, but every time I go to a porn site where they have like 20 different genres you can choose from, when I click on the redheads, Invariably, I am disappointed. There's always like a, there's girls in there with like dyed hair, and then the redheaded girls are not trimmed because I think they can get away with it. Uh, and then I have to go back to the teen section to finish myself off because, as you guys know, I'm quite the fan of teens. So I, uh, I, uh, it's not the light yet. I, uh, I didn't get the light last week. I didn't get the light last week, so I have carryover minutes. Uh, guys, I have a uh, show at the John Lovitz Comedy Club this Sunday, 6 p.m., up-and-comer show, even though many of the comedians are clearly on their way down. <laughs> ChrisPoutro.com, Megan'sLaw.com slash Chris Poutro. You guys have been great, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Poutro. Keep your hands going for him.